Family Theater presents Tyrone Power and John Hodiak. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Turn On the Lights, starring John Hodiak. Now, here is your host, Tyrone Power. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Turn On the Lights, starring John Hodiak as Commander Soames. I'd keep him on the adrenaline for a few more days, Lieutenant. All right, sir. Be better if we postpone any further surgery until he's back in the States. Well, if you're worried about our facilities, Commander, I should tell you we have just about everything aboard you need. <laughs> I'm not running down your hospital oh, ship, I... Lieutenant. I just think the boy needs more rest. Very well, sir. Now, what about this Marine sergeant that was taken aboard at Tokyo? Oh, oh yes, Landon. Well, this is his room right here, sir. Mm. About his history, are these dates correct? Yes, sir. Seems to me that five months is a pretty long recuperative period just for a flesh wound. Well, sir, in Landon's case, we considered it lucky that he recuperated at all. Oh? No, he didn't want to recover. Have you seen the psychologist's report on him? No. Well, no, it wouldn't be attached to that history, sir. Hmm. They're kept in a confidential file. What happened to him? Well, last spring, Sergeant Landon was sent out on a night reconnaissance patrol in charge of five men. And somehow the patrol was spotted and all of them were killed, all but him. He was wounded and crawled back to his own lines. Well, I guess it's only natural for a non-com to feel a sense of guilt when some of his men are lost. Yes, sir, yes. But Landon's guilt seems to go deeper, almost as if he personally were responsible for what happened. What kind of a combat record did he have? Well, excellent. Decorated twice. Do you mind if I talk to him alone? Oh, I wish you would, sir. Do you want me to wait out here? No, that won't be necessary. Very well. I'll be in the records office if you want me. Fine. Sergeant Landon? Yes, sir. Mind if I come in? No, sir. I'm Commander Soames. How do you do? Doctor? Yes. Mind if I sit down? No, sir. Uh, how's your leg feel, Sergeant? All right. A little stiff. That'll go away. Do you feel like talking about it yet? Uh, about what? About the five men you murdered. What do you mean, murdered? That's what it was, wasn't it? No! What kind of a doc are you? I was trying to save him. Save the kid, that's save all Save nobody, you were trying to save yourself. That's a lie, I wasn't! It was Kessler, the kid. He got separated from the squad and I tried to find him and they spotted us. I'm no murderer, I was trying to save the kid! I was trying to save the kid, I tell you! I can't see. I was trying to save the kid! I'm no murderer! All right, son. All right. All right. <laughs> That's how they spotted us. I know. I know. Go ahead, cry it out. I had to make you tell me what happened. That's why I said those things to you. I'm... I'm glad... Somebody knows, anyhow. 
You should have done this a long time ago. I... I couldn't. It was my fault. Oh, come now. No, no. No, it was. I, I tried to find Kessler. I, I thought about him when I should have been thinking about the whole squad. Well, that's only natural. Kessler was one of your men. No, no, no. If, I, if I'd stuck to the manual, played it like a pro, those guys would still be alive. What do you mean, like a pro? A professional. 30-year man. A soldier. That's where I went wrong. I, I was trying to act like a human being, and you can't be a good soldier and a human being at the same time. You didn't read that in the manual. Well, it ought to be there. Sergeant, it says here on your record that you were born in 1930. Uh, that's right, sir. I'm 23. Well, let's see. And you would have been about 14. Uh, when, sir? During the Battle of the Marianas. That was in June, 1944. It began with the invasion of Saipan by the 2nd and 4th Marine Divisions. Five days later, our naval task force in the Philippine Sea went into action against the enemy fleet under Admiral Ozawa. They said it was the biggest naval aircraft battle of the war. They nicknamed it the Marianas Turkey Shoot. The enemy lost almost 500 planes in that fight. But aboard the carrier on which I was serving, we had our losses too. Mr. Soms? Yes, Willett. You want it on the intercom, sir? It's the bridge. For me? Yes, sir. They asked for a doctor. Someone's been hit up Well, there. tell him to bring him down here to sickbay. Well, I suggested that, sir, but the officer on the line ordered me to get you. He says it's an emergency. Don't they think that we've got enough emergencies down here? Well, I tried to tell him that, All sir. All right. I'll talk to him. It's right over there, sir. Well, finish dressing that man's wound, will you? Yes, sir. I'll get to him. Sick bay, Lieutenant Soames. Yes, sir? Over here. Sir, do you know we have 14 men waiting for surgery down here? No, sir, I'm not operating at the moment. Well, no, they're not priority cases, but... Well, sir, why can't you bring the man down here? All right. All right, sir. I'll be right up. What's it all about, Mr. Soames? Some officer up in flag plot caught an ACAC splinter in his arm. He won't leave the bridge. Hey, you're getting up in the world. What? Well, there's only one person on this carrier they can't order off the bridge. The... the Admiral? Well, you bet. That uh, too tight, sir? Matter of fact, it feels a little loose. Well, it's not supposed to be a tourniquet, sir. It's just a dressing. Ah. How long do I have to lie here in this couch? Better stay off your feet for the next hour anyhow, sir. Well, can't you put my arm in a sling or something? Well, I intend to, sir, when it's time for you to get up. Ah. You tell the exec to report in here if anything shows on the radar. I've told him, sir. Well, I think we finished him off. Got a feeling Ozawa played his trump at the last strike. I certainly hope so, Admiral. Were you topside when they came over first time this morning? Uh, no, sir, I wasn't. Never saw anything like it. Better than 60 zigs. Not 10 of them got out. How about our own planes, Admiral? We lose many? Not bad, not bad. Well, an operations officer I spoke to says we've won a great victory. I think we will have when it's over. But, sir, you just said... I know what I said. We stripped Ozawa's fleet of its air support, but that's just a defensive victory. Now it's our turn to attack. Now hear this. Now hear this. All assigned pilots report to ready room at 1100 for briefing on today's mission. All right, all right. We hear you, we hear you. Your number come up for this one, Bill? Yeah, sure. You wouldn't expect the old man to plan an operation that didn't include Ensign Brooks, would you, Doc? <laughs> well, at least you'll have a lot of company. Yeah. 
Yeah, not one of them will be an admiral, you can bet on that. Well, most admirals I've seen are a little old to be flying Hellcats. Yeah, they never seem to get too old to shout hallelujah from the rear. Well, even so, I wouldn't want the old man's job. Too many big decisions. Yeah, some decisions. Do I send up 50 ships or 100? Do they go in waves of 20 or 40? <laughs> I'll trade jobs with them any time. Oh, I don't know. He's got a listing flag plot of every ship he sends out. Oh, so what? So I wouldn't like to be in his shoes when they towed up the ones that don't come back. Yeah, sure, sure. He reads the list and he hates himself for half an hour. The next morning he's back at the same old stand, raring to go. That's his job. And a pretty cushy one, too. Bill, let's face it. Somebody's got to give the orders. Yeah, sure, sure. And somebody else has to carry him out. Well, I can't argue with you there. Oh, don't pay any attention to me. Just letting off steam. <laughs> I know. But you know something? Just the same, just as a matter of interest, before this fracas goes into the record books, there's something I'd like to see. What's that? A brass hat. A great big brass hat. Having to make a choice between being a hero or saving his skin. Yes, Willett. Commander Johnson wants to report to sick bay as soon as the decks are clear, sir. All right. Well, they sure are something, aren't they? Uh, what? The Hellcats. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll say they are. All right. You ever been up, sir? A uh, commercial airliner. <laughs> Two years ago, I thought I'd be up there flying one of those babies. Oh, I didn't know you'd been an air cadet, Willett. Well, I wasn't for very long, sir. Washed out in pre-flight school. See, they sure are something, huh? Yeah. What was wrong? Physical? No. Couldn't lick the math. Navigation. Too bad. No, no, I ought to be grateful. Those boys taking off are going to need all the navigation they get this afternoon. Why this afternoon? Well, look at the time, sir. It's almost 1600. They got less than four hours of daylight to go out, make the strike, and get back here. It's cutting it pretty thin, if you ask me. Why would the Admiral wait so long to send them out? They were through with the briefing before lunch. Well, sir, that part's kind of smart. I got a buddy down in Ops told me Ozawa's fleet is somewhere northeast of us. Now, that means if they hit them late in the afternoon, they'll come in with the sun right behind them. Well, that's good. It sure is, sir. It's pretty hard to hit a man flying at you out of the sun. Now, what these guys got to worry about mostly is getting back here before dark. What if they don't get back here before then? Well, you... You can't land on a carrier if you can't see it. They're out of luck. You wanted to see me, Commander? Hmm? What's this Commander stuff, Joe? I thought we were just a couple of civilian medics. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I... I don't know, Jerry. I guess I'm getting a little rank conscious. Anything wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty is wrong. Well, I'm listening. Fifteen minutes ago, I watched 30 kids. Kids! Take off from this carrier. And you know what? What? They're dead men. You can write them off our records right now. They're dead. Hmm? How do you figure that? Because they aren't going to make it back here. Not before the sun goes down. They got a chance to... I understand they got a good chance to. Well, that's not the way I hear it. No? No. I hear it. They've been held off from making the strike until late afternoon, so they'll have the sun behind them. Well, doesn't that make sense? Sure, it makes great sense. Especially if you're back here on the bridge fighting the war like it's a chess game. Oh, no, take it easy, It even Joe. sounds humane. The Admiral takes every precaution to safeguard his flyers until you look at it a while. Cool down. And then it comes to you. 
This withered old butcher isn't worried about his men. He's worried about his target. Joe, shut up. He wants them to be alive when they get there. Joe! But how they get back, that's their problem. Dirty, lousy brass. Sit down, Joe. Yeah, yeah. I know how you feel. But I've been here a little longer than you have. It's just something you learn to get used to. You learn to get used to seeing men's lives spent like, oh, like quarters? No, 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 not intentionally, but if that's what it takes to win, yes, I guess that's what you learn. Then I'm not the man for this slot, because that's something I'll never learn. We're in war, Joe. Yes, we're in a war. And I'm a doctor. I'm supposed to save lives, not throw them no, away. Oh, no, no, no one means to throw them away. No? What would you say the Admiral's doing? His job. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know, that's just what I told Brooks this morning. What? That someone had to give the orders. I said it with a straight face, too. I said that was the Admiral's job, and I didn't envy him. Well, you were right. No, I wasn't. Brooks was right. He said he'd trade jobs with the Admiral any time, and he was right. Well, right or wrong, the Admiral's still your patient. What's that got to do with it? His dressing has to be changed. That's why I asked Willett to have you report here. Well, you can send someone else for that job. Look, I'm sending you for that job because that's who the Admiral wants. I won't do it. Now listen, Joe. You and I can think what we want about the way this war is being run, but you said it a moment ago. We're doctors, so just don't start acting like a prima donna on me. Then why don't you go up and change his dress? Because he asked for you. Oh, I'm flattered. I suppose I'm expected to break my neck getting up there, too, huh? Matter of fact, I was told to have you finish your tour of duty in sick bay and eat dinner first. Well, now, I wasn't that thoughtful. I think so. You want to know what I think, Jerry? All right. I think his nibs wants a neutral party up there to hold his hand when those planes come back after dark and start falling in the water. <laughs> Flag plot. Yes, Admiral. How much more daylight do we have? Sunset's logged for 2014, sir. About four minutes. Any sign of him yet? Negative. All right. Okay, now, go to it. And by the way, those pills you gave me last night worked fine. Glad to hear it, sir. First time in a month I've slept over four hours. Well, this may hurt a little. Go ahead. Well, sorry, sir. How's it look? Healing up very nicely. Do I have to keep wearing the sling? Just a few more days. Is something bothering you, Lieutenant? I was just thinking about the planes that are out, sir. That makes it unanimous. Do you think they'll make it back in time? Afraid not. You know, Admiral, I heard a story about a carrier pilot early in the war who didn't get back to his ship until after dark. Yes? Yes, sir. Don't lift your arm a bit. They uh, could hear him flying overhead, so they broke radio silence to talk to him. I remember the story, Lieutenant. He had less than an hour of fuel left, and the nearest land was four hours away. So they gave him his bearings and wished him good luck. Is that the story you mean? That's the one, sir. I guess you think that was pretty heartless. What do you think, sir? I think the commander of that ship had a tough decision to make. Yes, sir. Flag plot. Operations. We picked them up on the radar, Admiral. How far off? About five minutes, sir. Any daylight left? Negative. All finished up, Lieutenant? All finished, sir. You've never seen the task force from up here on my bridge, have you? No, sir, I haven't. Would you like to? Very much, sir. I'll snap off that light. We'll go out and have a look. Can you find the door? Yes, sir. Come on. I can hardly see anything, sir. Your eyes will get used to the dark in a few seconds. Can you make them out yet? Why? Yes, sir, a little. Just shadowy outlines so far. Those are the big ones, the cruisers. 
Those two long, flat shadows to the left are carriers like this. Before long, you'll be able to make out the destroyers. Well, yes, sir, I can see them now. They look tiny. They look bigger through a periscope. Any idea how large this force is? More than a hundred ships, sir? More than four hundred ships. Well, that's... That's quite a responsibility, sir. I agree with you. Flag plot. We've got a fix on the lead group, sir. They're coming in northwest. Very well. Any instructions, sir? Negative. Stand by. Hear anything yet, Lieutenant? No, sir. Keep listening. You will. Yes. Yes, sir. Now. They're back. Operations. Break silence with the commander of that lead group. Yes, sir. Hold on. We've got him, sir. What car is he with? Hold on, sir. 1305, sir. That's us. Tell me exactly what you've got on the subscreens. Just a minute, sir. Nothing for the last 15 minutes. And before that? Intermittent blip. Unidentified. What range? Hold on, sir. Two miles, sir. You're uh, sure that's absolutely all? Affirmative. Stand by. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I think you got this bandage a little tight. Sir, that blip on the radar scope, would that have been a submarine? Very possibly. What are you going to do, sir? The way I see it, I, uh, I haven't got much choice. Operations. Flag plot. Get a fuel estimate from that group leader. Hold on, sir. He says they can stay up about ten more minutes, sir. How, how far is the nearest land base? Just a minute, sir. Almost twenty, sir. All right. Pass the word. Turn on the lights. Yes, sir. Turn on! like that as long as I live. One by one, the great banks of landing lights along the edge of the carrier blazed up. Every ship in the task force turned on its searchlights to watch as one after another the squat blue Hellcats swooped down out of the darkness and came to rest on the decks of the carriers. No one thought about the enemy submarines or planes that might be lurking nearby. The risk had already been counted and taken, and everyone wanted it that way. I think the most important thing to remember about the man who turned on the lights is that he was a professional. One of the most successful professional military men we've ever had, Sergeant. You... You mean that really happened? It's naval history. An admiral took that kind of a risk with our whole task force just to save the lives of a few flyers? There were more than a few. There were a couple hundred. Oh, well, no wonder. No, great wonder. Remember, those few hundred flyers were a smaller part of the Admiral's fleet than Kessler was of your squad. Maybe, but... But the Admiral got away with it. He saved his men. That's why it's a good story. What do you think would have happened to him if there'd been a sub out there in the dark and had let go a couple of torpedoes? I've often wondered about that. I'll tell you what would have happened. He'd have been court-martialed. They'd have thrown the book at him. Then why haven't you been court-martialed? Why... I don't know. Would you like me to tell you? Yeah. 
It's because the pros, the 30-year men, the fellows who wrote that manual, realize that you and the Admiral and hundreds of others like you may sometime have to face a thing like this. That you may be forced in one way or another to make the hard choice between being a good soldier and a human being. I wonder if they know that. You can bank on it. It's the reason the Admiral wasn't court-martialed. It's the reason you won't be court-martialed. What's the reason? The pros, the 30-year men. They've got something in common with guys like you and the Admiral. Yeah? Yeah. They're human beings, too. This is Tyrone Power again. Listening to tonight's play with the sound of all those airplanes taking off and landing reminded me of a simple and yet moving sermon that I heard a chaplain give to a gathering of young fighter pilots during World War II. He said, You young men have spent many hours, thousands of feet in the air, and I guess that each of you at one time or another has felt a great sense of peace and contentment up there in the sky. Perhaps you've even felt that being able to fly has brought you a little closer to heaven than most of us ever get in this life. But have you ever considered how much like flying the simple act of prayer can be? You lift your heart to God, much as your ship lifts you from the runway. You forget for a while the smallness and meanness of the world. And if you look back at it, whether in prayerful meditation or in flight, you see that world as it must look to God. But most of all, in praying as in flying, you are given a sense of the wonder of all that God has created. Your mind, like your plane, can roam the horizons of time and space and see, one might say, the entire universe laid before you like a giant carpet. In fact, prayer is flight. The flight of our minds and hearts to the hand that cradled them. The hand of God. I'd just like to add a small footnote to those words of the chaplain. Don't forget, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Turn On The Lights, starring John Hodiak. Tyrone Power was your host. Others in our cast were Sam Edwards, John Daner, Ted DeCorsia, Tony Barrett, and Herb Ellis. The script was written by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Lou X. Landsworth. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Ballad of Dan McBurdy, starring Don DeFore and Sterling Holloway. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.